to understand molecular basis of synaptic plasticity here we are taking ca3 ca1 synapse as an example ca3 pre synaptic terminal have glutamate filled vesicles glutamate is excitatory neurotransmitter on another hand ca1 post synaptic membrane have two types of glutamate receptors one ampa receptors which are permeable only for sodium ions and second nmda receptor which are permeable for both sodium and calcium ions but at resting nmda receptor blocked by magnesium ion when high frequency stimuli arriving at ca3 pre synaptic terminal it opens voltage gated calcium channels calcium ion enter inside pre synaptic terminal it triggers event glutamate filled vesicles fuse with the pre synaptic membrane and glutamate release at the synapse glutamate binds with ampa receptor and nmda receptor here glycine also binds with nmda receptor binding of glutamate to ampa receptors activates ampa receptors sodium influx occurs via ampa receptors and post synaptic membrane becomes depolarized when wave of depolarization reaches nmda receptor it removes magnesium ion and nmda receptor becomes activated large amount of calcium ion enters inside the cell through nmda receptor there is increase in the calcium ion concentration in the post synaptic terminal here nmda receptors are known as coincidence detector because for the activation of nmda receptor both pre synaptic activity as well as post synaptic activity is required and the removal of magnesium ion this process is known as electrostatic repulsion now this calcium ion binds with calmodulin to form calcium calmodulin complex this calcium calmodulin complex binds with calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 the calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 has 12 subunits Binding of calcium calmodulin to a particular subunit transiently activates that subunit. When calcium calmodulin dissociates after calcium drops, the subunit becomes inactive. Active calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 can phosphorylate a threonine residue at amino acid 286 in the auto inhibitory domain of neighboring subunit. T286 phosphorylation impairs the auto inhibitory function so that activity of the phosphorylated subunit persists even after calcium calmodulin dissociates Now this activated calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 triggers early phase and late phase events in early phase events Calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 phosphorylates GLU A1 subunit on AMPA receptors so that it stabilizes AMPA receptors to the post synaptic membrane it also increase channel conduction of AMPA receptors it also induces ampa receptor exocytosis and ampa receptor trafficking to the post synaptic membrane these early phase events are required for short and intermediate term memory late phase events are responsible for long term memory 
it activates cmp response element binding site in nucleus and induces transcription new ampa receptors are formed and placed to the post synaptic membrane How LTP expression occurs? There is formation of new synapse between two neurons.